Welcome aboard the BK Escape Pod. That's right, it's the augmented and bionic podcast version of the live show. You can hear us Saturdays from 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. Eastern on 100.3 FM and AM 1450 WBHF Radio. You can stream the show live there Saturdays at WBHFradio.org or on the free TuneIn app. Look out, here we go. Stand by for launch. Hold on, I guess I better start recording the show. There you go. Your recording isn't necessarily the problem anymore. You're well, saving. Both of them are. Sometimes it's both of them because if I don't record them, I can't lose it later if I didn't record you it went to begin that with. one so. period back with Commander Clark in yeah. those days where he'd be like, Did you hit record? Yeah. He was my, he, he was my uh, safety net. <laughs> Did no. you know? You know, you know how when the guy walks the tightrope between the two buildings in New York and he's walking, mm-hmm. he didn't do it without a net. But I, I, I'm like the trapeze guy in the circus. I have to have that net under me to kind of catch me if I fall and do something stupid. And you know what's fun is the, the, the conversation we were having right before we went on the air about what kind of pizza we like mm-hmm. and and with you i found out with you at home it's the same dilemma uh gang war <laughs> chicago versus new york in your house as it is mine because you and i are you and i are new york pizza guys we like the thin crust mm-hmm. new york pizza you know but our our wives go to chicago well, I, didn't, I didn't say our wives i said we both like them equally at our oh house. i thought you were, i thought no. you preferred one of the no, other no. i like them both equally oh okay. that's why we order one of each all right so there's no war there you there's no war each other okay you guys are at war but i, I, mean, I if you're going to war over it's, pizza it's there's... a small skirmage it's not a war <laughs> it's it's i can i can eat the deep the the, the thin the, the I, deep dish if i have to there is no good, pizza so. i actually don't like but pizza good. Uh, there are toppings there i don't toppings. like yeah right there you exactly go. But there's no pizza yet pizza that I would is love good. and eat. But I'm more of a thin crust than a than a thick crust. Hey, that sounds good. Hey, you don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have to hit me over the head with a pizza cutter. And uh, we're keeping a local business in in right another order, which, which always feels good. Because of, speaking of that, and uh, hey, it's BK on the air, by the way. If you want to call us during any time during the show about whatever we're talking about, and we got a big subject coming up later, seven seven zero three eight six fourteen fifty. Keep that number in mind because I'm going to ask a question later, and I want you to participate and call in. And give us your side and your pick for what I'm going to talk about. But right now, I want to talk about. I took a I took a long drive. It takes about three and a half hours, depending on traffic, to drive up to um, Asheville, North Carolina, from Atlanta. And I, I drove up there last night, and I decided to do something on a long drive. Sometimes either you're tuning into the TuneIn app, or you're listening to Pandora, or whatever music, whatever i iTunes you're listening to, or whatever or XM, whatever whatever you're listening to. If you can't hear local stations, or you can listen to us on TuneIn, whatever app you're using, you can do it on long drives because you got a lot of time to kill. A lot of people listen to books on books on CD or whatever, learn a new language. Whatever you want to do on a long drive, you got nobody in the car with you. I can only talk to myself for so long, then I get bored. I bore myself. I, start, I decided to that turn two on... two hours on a Saturday from 10 to noon? <laughs> yeah, I listened to the uh, uh, show from last week, the whole day. <laughs> but that only takes two hours. I decided to listen to local radio going up on this drive, and I turned on the radio, and I just hit the scan button in the vehicle, and I started to just tune in just to see what the local offerings are up there on AM and FM, and I found an interesting trend last night. Now, something happened on WBHF here last night. Football games are starting up again, and we do cover all the local ones here going on here in Bartow County, northwest Georgia. So I was going up through uh, north East Georgia, going through South Carolina, doing through, going through North Carolina, and I heard on all these stations, all these local football games being broadcast on these small stations going up through the through the the, uh, the tri-state area up through there, and it was kind of cool hearing it. And I'm not a big sports fan, but I something came over me last night when I heard that. I thought. Wow, it kind of sounds like things are kind of getting back into the groove again, into normal. Sports mm-hmm. are coming back. I heard them all giving their, you know, Billy Joe Bob's on the 50th yard line. He throws the pass. Everyone locally is calling the local plays. And then just for fun, after I was kind of through with the radio, I turned, I went to the tuning app and listened to WBHF, our radio station here. And the same thing was happening. You guys were reporting. Alan, you were here last night working mm-hmm. the board. You had the after party show here in the station, t- and all the victories to that give happened a last proper night. attribution. The Harry Daniel Insurance. Harry Post Daniel's Insurance. Party. That's right. But it was it was it was fun just to hear that going on, even at my station and all these other little state. I mean, you could have interchanged all of them. All the others sounded what just the, like what you guys are doing. What was the text <laughs> I sent you back? Because I was like, yeah. are you really listening to high school what? football? You're like, you? who, who are you? Are you? Were you replaced by Invasion of the Body Snatchers, BK? Are you an alien? What's going on? 
I'm waiting for you to walk into the studio this morning and go, I just thought. <laughs> Donald Sutherland, yeah, <laughs> screaming. Uh, no, I just thought that's something I would do last night, and that what that's just what happened to be on the radio was all these stations were doing the same thing. They were p- reporting local sports, and it sounded, I, I have to admit, it sounded really comforting to hear that that's kind of back. All of that factor in all the films that are coming out now. The theaters are slowly, if not already, all open again, showing a lot of new movies. Where all the new trailers, I, when you go when you go to the theater now, you don't see just one trailer for Mulan now. <laughs> that's all we were seeing. We Mulan go see an old and Tenet. That's Tenet it. trailer. Oh, I, I feel like I've seen the films after I've seen these trailers fourteen times. But now. The newer movies are out. Bill and Ted's uh, Space the Music is out. There's a Russell Crowe movie called Unhinged that's out. Uh, the new trailer for the new – and here's what I was going to tell you about earlier about opening the phone lines. The new Bond trailer came out. It was yesterday or day before yesterday. No Time to Die, James Bond, Daniel Craig. The second trailer came out. Looked really cool, as the, all the Bonds trailers do. So all the trailers are out, and uh, movie production and television production has started back up again in Georgia. Except for Batman, that had to shut back down yeah, again. And it had, had went <laughs> step back for that reason. So <laughs> Hey, Robert we're back, Pattinson, and we're off. <laughs> <laughs> let's all resume filming. It's great. Not so fast, the Batman. <laughs> so Robert Pattinson Robert, and Bruce we Wayne told is you isolate between contracted <laughs> COVID-19, our new Batman actor. Was he not wearing his mask <laughs> well wait a minute the batman wait mask doesn't cover up the, the mouth so oh that yeah. would be brilliant walk in as batman uh. <laughs> where's your but, mask are you blind uh, and you gotta wear to, not are in you your mouth blind? though <laughs> it's not you, you i'm wearing least, my mask at least wore the darth vader one it covers up your mouth <laughs> but yeah that you know bat the batman aside with his contracting covid robert pattison is the batman but yeah everything's kind of creeping back up up, up to normal and it makes me feel it just makes me feel good that hopefully we're going to be on our way to a little more normal life here soon i want to say one thing and i hope that sense that you're feeling because i felt it and i loved I it i did because sports whether you like them or not sports much like movies much like music are meant to be a unifying thing it's not supposed to be branded and polished as something else right you know it's not supposed to be a political slogan and then the music comes second or right. a political movement and the game comes second what we had last night was exactly what sports and music and entertainment is supposed to do yeah bring us together and i hope higher levels of music entertainment and sports that toast i hope they'll wake up and go you know what at some point maybe we can just let other venues be the place for the messaging maybe we should right. get back to playing the game because goodness or knows putting on the concert. goodness knows sports movies and music have been used politically and i hate it when they do that i mean it's you can do what you want it's a free country you can write a song or make a movie about whatever you want but it's just to me it's not the venue to do it nor is this show i don't i don't use this show to do that right either. other people do that i'm here to talk about just the stupid goof, goofy things that i grew up and loved it's bk on there we're gonna have here from the golden rage of tv when we come back we'll return after these announcements i remember the day the girls came over for bridge club i was so embarrassed because of lingering odors fish for dinner last night phew aren't we still smoking the cigars Christ, did a cow shit in here? Now you can kick the smoking habit in just one week's time with a powerful new product called Puff Beater. Puff Beater. Puff Beater is superior to other products, and here's why. When a person quits smoking, they develop a self-righteous attitude, looking down upon people who still smoke. <coughs> Puff Beater keeps you from having this obnoxious behavior. I quit smoking using Puff Beater. I feel great, and I don't harass losers who still smoke. I saved enough money by quitting smoking that I can now afford to drink a latte anytime I want. Change your life with all new Puff Beater. Always read and follow label instructions. Puff Beater recommends if a person who has quit smoking using a different treatment is giving you grief, just tell them, I can't wait to see how fat you get. Puff Beater is not really proven yet, but it hasn't been disproven either. <laughs> Kick the smoking habit and do it now without turning into a f***ing p- Call now for your free video. Puff Beater. 
Greetings, fellow classic TV fans. If you loved Sid and Marty Croft's Land of the Lost, you'll know the name Kathy Coleman. She played the cute, blonde, pigtailed Holly Marshall in the live-action Saturday morning series. Her on-screen brother, played by Wesley Ewer, often yelled out, Run, Holly, run, as they were constantly threatened by deadly dinosaurs or the villainous sleestack creatures. Recently, I read Kathy's memoir, appropriately titled after this catchphrase, and I can tell you it is one of the most compelling autobiographies out of the many I've read. As Aaron Murphy, who played Tabitha on Bewitched, said, and I quote, I read Run, Holly, Run in one sitting. Her story is honest and heartbreaking, end quote. With co-authors Stephen Thompson and Dave Smitherman, she writes of her Hollywood beginnings and the mostly enjoyable times on the show. But the book gets really rolling as it picks up on her life after the series ended. Maintaining her fame and fortune, as with many child stars, proved challenging. Her brutal honesty within its pages of a deeply troubled marriage, the temptations and pitfalls of Hollywood, and her constant battle to keep her financial head above water keeps the reader riveted. But ultimately, this is a classic tale of a true Hollywood survivor. You can pick up your copy on Amazon if you go to the search menu and type in Run Holly Run. This is Pat McCormick with your retro TV trivia from the Golden Rage of TV. You can also find me on YouTube and Facebook at Golden Rage of TV and on Twitter at Golden Rage of TV One. And now back to BK on the Air. Thank you, Pat. Yes, run, Holly, run. If you haven't, uh, if you can, and you're a fan of Land of the Lost, a fantastic Saturday show. It was my, I don't know about you, Alan, but it was kind of my first introduction on television to dinosaurs. You know, they, mm-hmm. were, they were thrust back into this weird Land of the Lost and got lost. And, and, the uh, slee stacks. The slee stacks, yeah. Oh. Was, they always freaked me out. Oh, look, out. we've got, and, uh, we've got yeah, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara's outside of the station, brought us more food this morning. As usual, we appreciate her bringing us treats. We don't ask for them, but she's a loyal listener to the show and she loves bringing stuff to the station uh, for us to eat but if you if you're a fan of land of the lost like uh, pat mccormick of the golden rage of tv was talking about there you should order her book kathy coleman's book who played holly uh the blonde uh, braided haired girl on land of the lost order her book run holly run uh off of amazon or wherever you can find it because it's a fantastic read and usually all these books by these actors from these old TV shows are always usually, and <laughs> including hers for sure, a wonderful, entertaining read. For, you can you can learn insight behind the scenes. And you and I love mm-hmm. how things are made, the making of things. Sometimes you learn a little too much. You're like, right. oh, wow, they they fought like cats and dogs on that show or whatever show they're talking about. That's terrible to know that they were doing that when they would say cut on the camera and they'd scratch each other's eyes out or whatever. That happened on some shows. Or took each other out after. But, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wait, what? Or that who, who, who? You couldn't get along with who? He was Greg terrible. and Mom? Wait what? So, <laughs> except Mrs. C on on uh, on Happy Days, Marion Ross, I hear was just as nice in person as she was on camera as Mrs. C, and that's fantastic. Well, we know. both agree she'd be our TV mom. She's our favorite TV TV mom of all time. Yep. She really is. So, Without a doubt. So thanks to Pat McCormick for that, and also thanks to Pat McCormick for sending us our Golden Rage yeah. TV T shirts. Dude, we got. this is awesome. Isn't Love that it. Great. Did you see Pat's uh, his page? Uh, did you see his new uh, banner where he's posing with three yeah. of the folks from Lost in Space? Yes. And Very cool. I know all he carried was being with the women. Now, maybe because the guys are dead, but that's fine because well, I would have posed with the women, there's too. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what, the guy's dead? <laughs> no, I, most of my Dragon Con, and by the way, Dragon Con is not going on this weekend. It's virtually going on, and we'll talk about that, too, today a little bit. Uh, some people would be there in downtown Atlanta, Dragon Con this weekend, but it's not going on due to COVID. So they're doing it virtually online. I think you can go to DragonCon.org to find out the details and where yeah. you can watch things going on. But, yeah, most of my photos from Dragon Con and some of these other conventions in the past, I'm usually with the female cast members, too, in my picture. I don't know why. I just wound up that way. I didn't well, think I know about why. it. But it was subconscious. I didn't do it on purpose. I mean, why, why would I? That Although you were getting sense, pretty chummy so. with Gil Gerard, so. Hey, well, they, <laughs> why not? Hey, man. My childhood hero, man. You're pretty hot still, dude. <laughs> yeah, if you look at that picture really close, he he's looks on like the he's other side of the table. <laughs> he's, we're hugging across the table, you know, and I'm like, I'm like oh, okay, Gil Gerard. <laughs> So, because I've been posting pictures over the past few days of dra- past Dragon Cons of the past, and I did go 
It was a seven-year period. I think I went once a year, every year, for seven years straight. And it's a fun thing to do, to go down there today. Uh, two things today. Let me give out the number, 770-386-1450. Call us today. If you've got Dragon Con memories or convention memories or whatever, especially here in the southeast in Atlanta, because we're, we're, we're in the southeast near Atlanta, and, and Dragon Con is huge. It's one of the biggest conventions in America. Got some memories you want to talk about it? You can call me up and talk about it, and I'll, I'll probably throw a few more of mine, uh, celebrities we've met and talked to. And uh, It's always fun when a people of 80,000-plus people get together that are, are of a like mind and, and like Mm-hmm. Almost some of the, some of the same things. It's not even it's not even exactly the same thing. There's so many different things going on that you could like something totally different and still go there and be entertained. So, anything from music to cosplay to celebrities to buying things, uh, 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 interpretive theater, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want to say, you know, alcohol tasting, whatever you want to say. It's well, right. I'm into that. That's in the rooms, though. That's later, after hours or whatever. But uh, anything you you can name. Uh, does this go on at Dragon Con? I would probably say, yeah, probably. that goes on. What about wrestling? Yeah, yeah. there's wrestling there. Uh, there's just just about just about anything you can think of uh, goes on at that convention. And also, the other thing I want to throw out there is, it, it looks like J- uh, Daniel Craig. This might be Daniel Craig's last outing as James Bond in this new movie called No Time to Die. And uh, by the way, the letter font... I ain't got time to die. The letter font... <laughs> you got time to bleed? The, <laughs> the, the letter font on No Time to Die, I think it's cool because it's the Love Boat letter font. <laughs> I looked at it and I'm like, wait a minute, that's the same letter font as the Love Boat. Did they did they notice that? I had to look it up and see what that official font is called. It Isn't looks kind of like, like the, the stencil? o- official stencils that we used uh, to have in, in okay, grade It kind of looks like that. But I don't know who if they didn't catch that or they just thought, oh my goodness, we've, we've chosen the Love, Bo- Love Boat font for the new Bond film and we didn't know that until later. But if you've got an idea, who do. Do you, who do you think, or maybe I've got three, who do you think would be a good replacement for Daniel Craig as James Bond? Because, believe it or not, he may, it's reported he's not going to be Bond, and I've heard interviews mm-hmm. where he's kind of sick of it or whatnot. I think he was almost not returning for this one at one point. Right, he they wasn't. get him back. But I think if you ask an actor right after the film is over, and maybe they got hurt on the set, and they've uh-huh. been in the franchise for a while, and they're getting kind of tired of it. If you ask them questions right after they're done filming, they're liable to say something like that. But well, that's like asking a months. woman who just finished giving birth, you ready for another? <laughs> Not you, the right time. You say that like you've done that before. Not the right Did time. You ask her? No, I'm just I'm hearing oh, okay. you don't do that. Good. Okay. Well, I can, you see, give I can it totally like see that. Six months down the road, and they're like cute and fun, right. and all the memory of what it was like have faded. Yeah. So that's maybe why Craig says he didn't want to do it, but I haven't heard any different from him. And who knows? He he might change his mind and want to return, and they may keep him. You can never tell. 770-386-1450. Call me up today and tell me who you'd replace Daniel Craig with. We'll talk about it, interweave it through the show today. I asked you last night. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, I think I want to talk about who wants I've to got be a Bond replacement. Three think for about it. sure. In fact, I've got the three best. All of them would be the perfect pick. I got three for sure, too. Let's see if one of them matches, or maybe two of them might match. I don't know. And you may pick someone that I don't know who you're talking about. I doubt that, because you and I are pretty familiar with the same people. I would highly doubt that. But, uh, but yeah. Now, my... Okay, you didn't give me these criteria. Right. I wasn't going to go with a female. Well, I don't that's care. Good. I don't care what they say. To that's me, good. James Bond is a character that exists. That's good. So if I'm recasting him, I'm going to recast him as the existing right. character. Because okay. the Broccoli's, the producer said James Bond will not be a female. Because right. James Bond isn't one, and that's what hey, that's what they said. Not I didn't I didn't say that. The, the Broccoli's, uh, Michael Wilson and, and and Barbara Broccoli, I think, said that James Bond is going to continue to be a, a male, which is James Bond. That's, that's the thing. If you want to make a female secret agent, then go and film one. Go 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 invent one. Mm-hmm. Go do one. I mean, go, we have one. Black Widow. One. Didn't they? Try, they tried once with. Um, didn't they try with Charlize Theron as uh, what was her? What was her? She salt? did. No, Salt was Angelina Jolie. Angelina, there was one, and I know we got a caller, but there do? was a one where she was sort of like a Cold War spy. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. It I didn't do it well was. in theaters. Uh, it was awesome. Uh, something Blonde. I have to look it back up. It was, God, what was it, Charlize Theron? Concrete Blonde. No, Concrete so, Something like that. She had a uh, Four Non Blonde? Like no, that's it. a group. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the phones now. It's BK on there. Hey, who is this? Hey, guys. This is Jeff. How are y'all? This? Good morning, Jeff. How you doing, buddy? I've been here all morning. I just couldn't get a word in edgewise. Dude. Abby wouldn't be quiet. No. Oh, I thought you meant at home. <laughs> Sorry, we don't get a word in edgewise at home. Well, what are you calling about this morning? Did you want to, Did you want to tell us your pick for? You want to talk about James Bond or what? Yeah, I'm gonna give you one a little off the wall, but James Spader. James Spader is James Bond, really American actor. So you think James Spader would make a good Bond? 
Well, you know, he's very versatile in every role I've seen. He's him. a very I'm good wild. actor. He might be a little too old at this point, though. That's true, yeah, because I know yeah. I think you're going with younger people. But uh, that's interesting. I know that it was – did you know that they, James Spader was the, the voice of Ultron, the robot, in the Avengers uh, Age of Ultron? Uh huh. Yes, yes. Yeah, and he was his. He's very. He has a very. When he wants to do it, he has a very intimidating voice. <laughs> it's very intimidating. <laughs> so, but, uh, but that's an interesting choice. I didn't even think about that. But uh, that's very cool. Who was your favorite Bond? If you had to pick one, are you gonna go the Sean Connery route like a lot of people do? Yeah, that was mine. Sean Connery by far. He was. He he was the the the, the very best out of the Bonds, and he also was the one that it, it took him a little while to do it, but he did finally shake off the Bond stigma stereotype acting roles. He finally f- fell into his own after a while and did some good things after Bond. Yeah, I liked him in the Hunt for Red October too. That was a fantastic, fantastic role, and he had one of the absolute best hair pieces in that film I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looked like it didn't look fake at all. I'm like, that looks like his hair. That's fantastic. Well, Jeff, thanks for calling, buddy, and, and putting in your bond vote. We'll we'll, put, we'll throw it into the hopper and we'll tally it all up at, before the show's over today. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah, Roger Moore was second, by the way. He was right. Better work. Great. Good to hear from you, buddy. See you. Talk to you later. Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde. I knew it had blonde in the oh, title. So good. I didn't see it, though. I didn't see it. I need to watch it. So good. Oh, check it out. And uh, I was, was shocked one. how good it was. There was another one with her where she played like an, an MTV character called Ian Flux. Flux. Yeah, yeah Ian Flux. Flux. I didn't hear that, too. But, uh, but yeah, who's your favorite Bond? We're going to, uh, today we're going to flash the audience when we come back after the break, and we'll get into that. We'll talk a little Bond, and we'll give you our picks for our favorite James Bonds, because, hey, you know, we're important. Who are we? You know, if you want to hear our opinion on what it is, because we've been watching them for years, it's BK on the air. They call me Yuck Ma, because I don't brush. Oh, I like my teeth like this. They call me Yuck Ma. No, I won't brush. How's about a little kiss? I got roast beef in my teeth, got some chicken too. Ouch! That's a cavity. Hey, that's new. Well, if you don't brush your teeth, then get you too. Can be a yuck mouth. Don't be a yuck mouth. Another nutritional message from the ABC Television Network. Get ready for a new look to ABC's All Star Saturday. Starting with that cool cat, the Pink Panther. Come apart. And Bang Face. Then it's the new 90-minute challenge of the Super Friends, followed by everybody's favorite Scooby's All-Stars, starting Saturday. Hey, we're back. It's BK on the air here on AM 1450 and 100.3 FM WBHF. Stream us online at WBHFradio.org or use the free TuneIn app to listen. There's so many ways to listen, or you could just turn on the old-fashioned radio like I did last night on my drive and listen to us on AM or the FM frequency, which is always fun. <laughs> what the heck is that? See, on the FM frequency, <laughs> that bass sound is really nice there when you do that. So. Yeah. I gotta start smoking unfiltered camels. I gotta sure. get that voice, and I don't even smoke. <laughs> well, yeah, you got the Mine's gift. Aged, I gotta work so, on it. I gotta uh, scream at a concert. Hey, your voice too. sounds fine. There's nothing wrong with your voice. Uh, you got uh, a pretty little voice over there. I, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you pretty little thing. You. <laughs> it's like the wife. I always, and I know she's not listening. Well, she is now because I'm gonna talk to her about her. She has. She has the eternally youthful sounding voice. She can be. She, remember the maybe the cartoon character Betty Boop. Mm-hmm. I am Betty Boop. You know, he's like, I can't do it. As, I can't do like the, the Elmo voice like you can. But that lady that talked for Betty Boop <laughs> yeah. did her voice, I think, until she was 80 Almost, years old. Yeah. She Her voice sounded exactly the same. So my wife has an we eternally young voice. We get that actress from Poltergeist, Zelda. Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah, her voice sounded like that. Just mm-hmm. that you, you listen and you're like, it sounds like a 14-year-old kid. No, it's not. Yeah, clear your mans. <laughs> this house is clean. <laughs> I got that. It's time that we <laughs> where are like we? the audience. Yeah. Where am I? I don't know. I am. He already got poltergeist knows in what here. scares you. We already know there's poltergeist and gremlins both in the studio because if <laughs> I I lose recordings on the on the uh, on the computer. Oh look, I have the first news of the weird, the strange, and the bizarre from UPI. Beer giant Anheuser Busch announced it quickly. I didn't even know about this. It quickly sold out of its latest offering. A dog brew that contains no alcohol and is designed to be enjoyed by man's best friend. Did you hear about this? I, I, I said to say, I the have not. brewing company said dog brew is a bone broth made from pork, corn, celery, mint, and ginger ingredients designed to appeal to the tastes and nutritional <laughs> needs of dogs. All right, I need to find some. 
we that's sold out right now, but they're trying to get it back up. The product uh, offered uh, for order online it quickly sold out, but the company said interesting cust- interested customers, interesting ones too, are being put on a waiting list while more product is being produced. I didn't All even right. know there was a dog brew out there. I great. will have to go on that list and get on that waiting list. I think that is a really, really cool idea. We I, both can use it. Folks, and if you are giving like <laughs> real beer to your dog, don't do that. No, don't do that. And, don't do and, that. And you can go search for it online. There are reputable sites out there that, that say foods not to, to feed your dog. Everybody knows about what? Chocolate. Right. Chocolate is deadly to dogs. There are some other things. There are some things that I didn't like even raisins know. raisins are bad for and dogs. And onions. You know, onions are, are, aren't that great. So so look up, look it up, and don't be feeding your dog stuff that they shouldn't be eating. Come on. They no. shouldn't really be eating table scraps anyway. Feed them food for them. Give them an occasional treat. You know, just like with us. We get an occasal treat, which <laughs> right. is fine. But don't, you know don't feed them all kinds They'll of live stuff. a lot longer. Be a lot happier. And won't you be happy? I know I will be. I know, because they already don't live long enough as it is. Hey, if, I've, I always said if dogs lived as long as humans, we wouldn't be able to handle it. We no. can't handle it as it is no, it's with so the hard. short life plan that they have. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and get back onto the on track. I got the next news. Speaking of doggies. Yeah. <laughs> a dachshund left behind in the United States when her owners had to fly home to Australia amid the COVID-19 pandemic was reunited with her family after five months and a 10,000-mile journey. And they got their wiener back. <laughs> yep. That's good. They, they so, did. Sorry. <laughs> Not expecting well, that. Yeah. yeah. Zoe and Guy Eilbeck said they set out for a yacht trip around the world with their sons, Cam and Max, and the family adopted Pipsqueak, the wiener dog, affectionately known as Pip. That's a cool name for a wiener dog. Hey, Pipsqueak. <laughs> Pip. Come here, Pip. Uh, the Eilbecks forced, or were forced to abandon their sailing plans in March when the coronavirus pandemic led to several international borders being closed. They docked their 40-foot yacht in Hilton Head, South Carolina, and had 48 hours to fly home before the Australian border closed. Pip was unable to accompany the family on the flight due to Australia's strict rules for the importation of animals. Pets need to have a U.S. government declaration that they are in good health and have been tested for rabies. The family departed the country on March 27th, leaving Pip wow. with friend Lynn Williams in North Carolina. The dog finally did arrive in Sydney at the airport August the 11th, earlier this, earlier last month, I should say, about a month ago, five months after being left behind in the U.S., the family had an emotional reunion with their pet saying, quote, she's part of our family and it's been five months and that's a long time to miss anybody. And, Aww, and, what a feel good, feel good story. And unlike uh, if, if you've got a dog and they're not part of your family or you don't consider them part of the family, maybe you shouldn't have one because I that's agree. really the way we treat them. I mean, when we go on vacations and whatnot, I have some. I have uh, uh, our our son takes care of our dog because we've got a built-in babysitter. We don't have to kennel our dog or anything. Yeah, which is I great. do not. Hey guys, thanks for the poster by the way the other day. We have it hung up in the lobby. <laughs> I love it when people walk by <laughs> yes, and wave at they us. They love here. It's WBHF. Awesome. Um, oh, I think they love you, and they just attributed you to WBHF. What but Barry you have a here sweet first? Voice, though I said that before, so that's all right. I <laughs> listen to you. It's super sweet. But dogs are part of the, dogs are part of our family. I worry about my dog when I'm on vacation because I'll call. I'm an, I'm stupid. I'll call him like, is she okay? She doing all right? I mean, not every minute. I we have call a doggy, but I do that. Do you see, I need to. Get I can that. log in on the internet. Yeah, I can log in see on the internet the and I can doing. check out the uh, the family room. I got the next news from UPI. A property listed for seventy five million dollars in Virginia comes with amenities, including a winery, a brewery, a go kart track. And a Budweiser surprise. Another Anheuser Busch. Okay, I just found my here. dream home. <laughs> yeah, wait till you hear this. You're probably going to want this one. And I, I saved. I, saved I mean, it's surprise. got everything I love already. The mountain. Nothing like getting you drunk and getting behind a go kart. <laughs> well, here you can you do guys something. Want to play Mad Max? <laughs> but you can do something else too. I haven't told you what else they've got. The Mount Ida Estate, which encompasses 4,500 acres, so you got room to do it, buddy. Oh. Features 26 houses and was once owned by Bernard Arno, CEO of luxury conglomerate LV. M.H. Moet Hennessy, Louis Vuitton S.E. The current owner, Tom Sullivan, Does spent that about fit a on a business card. <laughs> two business cards. Wow, <laughs> you have to take both sides of that business card. Uh, the the current owner, Tom Sullivan, spent about a hundred million dollars on renovations and upgrades to the property. Listing agents Sotheby's said Sotheby's Sotheby's. The upgrades include the fully functioning winery, brewery, go-kart track, as we talked about, event spaces, two tennis courts, a pool, a 180-foot water slide, and here's the kicker, a collection of Clydesdale horses that were formerly part of Budweiser's famous herd. 
My There's the punchline of the story right there. My goodness. That All that's missing is an listing. arcade room. The li- <laughs> you could buy one I'm if you sure. can afford that. <laughs> yeah. The listing at you could play our handheld arcades while riding the Clydesdales. The listing agency said the estate would take the title of Virginia's most expensive property property if it sells for the seventy five million dollar asking price. Wow! So that that comes with uh, that's that's a nice little uh, that's a nice pad. <laughs> I gotta have a few people now, over for a party. Does it seem weird there. that he spent a hundred million dollars in renovations and upgrades, and they're hoping to get seventy five? Yeah, million? I guess the guy that I guess the guy that spent the renovations. How does that work exactly? And was it over time that he spent? The, maybe he's still out that money. I guess he doesn't care. I don't or maybe know. he's just trying to get some of it back. It's, it's like people that have the old car, and I'm like, I gotta sell this car, but I'm gonna put a new transmission in it and and rebuild the engine and blah blah blah. I'm like, why don't you just keep it? Why don't you keep it at that point? point. Like, you're never gonna get your money out of it because it's so old. All right, I think I've got the last. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but neither does this show, so that's fine. A cinema enthusiast in Manitoba is going for a Guinness World Record by attempting to see Tenet in theaters 120 times. Craig Sharp, age 47 of Winnipeg, began his attempt on August the 26th and attended his 15th screening of Tenet early Tuesday afternoon in his quest to see the Christopher Nolan film 120 times. Sharp said his goal is to break the Guinness World Record for the most cinema productions attended, same film. The record is currently held by an Australian woman, Joanne Connor, who attended 108 screenings of Bohemian Rhapsody in 2019. Wow. Sharp said he expects his attempt to take about 30 days. The rules from Guinness are you have from the time it's open, and it only counts when it's a first-run movie. He's told uh, the the free press. Moment is avail- the moment it's available for download or purchase, that window closes. The rules Makes require sense. Sharp to stay for the entire movie, including credits. The cinema enthusiast said he was he has yet to tire the film. Uh, after even only 10 screenings. What, what's the running time of Tenet? Why is he doing it? Christopher Nolan, probably a good two hours well, why, and 30 why minutes. Why is he going 120 times? Is that having a significant time? I don't time? know. I thought the movie was 120 minutes long. Maybe not. It's probably longer. Than that. I just think he wants to establish it so it's not easily broken. When I was younger, I would love to go see a marathon of films or do that. I feel I find that I wouldn't be able to do that now. Unless I was paid a large amount of money, I could do it. Couldn't you? That yeah, would be. I could do it. I could do it. Incentive. You owe me $95,000, and I want it now. But what about me and my four children? I'm going to have to sell the cattle ranch. How much? $200,000. Oh. I've got to pay my father-in-law $10,000. Oh, why not I buy insurance? Decisions, decisions. Oh, pay me. Go on your salary, please. There's a game called Life that's really worth living. You and your family have got to play it. The Game of Life from Milton Bradley. Past isn't dead. James, fate draws us back together. Now your enemy is my enemy. His name is Safin. And what does he want? Revenge. Me. When her secret finds its way out, there'll be the death of you. You can imagine why I'd come back to play. There's a young lady in Santiago I want you to meet. You're late. When you're ready. Salute. Well, I met your new double O. She's a disarming young woman. I get why you shot him. Yeah, well, everyone tries at least once. both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. Come on, Bond. Where the hell are you? Do you have a flower on this? Nope. Harder to tell the good from bad, villains from heroes these days. What is it? You don't know what this is. He's going to kill millions.
That's right. Dangerous. No time to die. James Bond. It opens uh, the trailer. Everything's back on again. James Bond opens November the 20th. No time to die. The newest James Bond film in a long running film franchise. And one can safely say that you and I are both fans of James Bond and have been for a long time. You know it, buddy. <laughs> No matter who plays Bond, I mean, no matter no matter the subject matter, I'm I, I've always liked the Bond, the Bond franchise. I'll even put up with the one George Lazenby Bond if I'm going to do a Bond well, watching. Yeah, I mean, but because it's part of the whole, it's part of the whole, it's a part of Bond. It's it, the guy was not an actor; he was a model. George Lazenby always usually shows up as everyone's least favorite Bond. Well, big surprise, he only played him once, and he only had one film, and he wasn't an actor. I don't know why they chose him anyway. But the movie itself, the story, has gained a lot of respect over the years is a really great done film that to me uh, on her majesty's secret service number one has one of the best scores of all the films by john barry and number two it has the single best snow skis chase sequence out of all of them a lot of the bonds have that chase you on think the better skis than roger moore even better than roger moore and, and roger moore's uh you talking about from the spy who loved me yes and he had one in uh view to a kill too yeah even better than that because it, because they did it first and what it went through what they went through to do that ski sequence in in the uh in on magic secret service now if someone's favorite is the roger moore one that's fine i'll, I'll that's fine uh, i don't have a problem with that that's sorry the first time favorite. i saw it and he goes off the cliff and i'm like what the? Why? I mean, oh, you mean the Roger Moore? Scene? And then all of a sudden he and pulls the, the shoot? shoot, and it's a British flag. And it's I'm the like, Union Jack. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> but here, here's what here's what fascinating. We'll get we'll get back to No Time to Die and stuff in a minute. And I've got a list of the move, uh, b- longest running movie franchises in, ever. I bet uh, we're talking we'll talk about, about one. <laughs> we are talking about one right now. We're talking about the longest one, and that's the James Bond films. But there are some more that are that are long that I didn't even know about. The Honor Majesty Secret Service ski sequence. That sequence had never been done that way before because the entire sequence of, other than the shots of the actors on blue screen, obviously with snow going behind them in the studio, the scenes of the of the camera angle in front of the actors with them coming towards you and following them, uh, like, like the cameras following them and the cameras moving backwards, that was accomplished by using, and I can't remember his name at this time, but he was a fantastic cameraman, and think of what he had to do with that. It's like when Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers would dance in these old films, and everyone would everyone argues that you know Fred Astaire could be one of the best dancers ever in film. Well, Ginger Rogers, they, they, they forget about her because she danced with Fred the entire dance that he did in heels and backwards. So maybe she's the better dancer out of those two. Good well, point. this cameraman filmed the snow sequences in Our Majesty's Secret Service with George Lazenby. He filmed them, filmed the stuntmen skiing, but he filmed them while skiing backwards, hmm. holding a camera. So that's that's a pretty big feat, if you ask me. He's probably the better skier out of all of <laughs> doing that. I would suggest yes. I rode by ski backwards holding this heavy camera and kept you in frame the whole time and made you look really good. So... So No Time to Die opening on November the 20th. And a lot of movies are opening again, and you and I talk about how good we feel that things are getting back to normal. Sports are coming back, and movies, mm-hmm. movie production, and all that is coming back to normal, thank goodness. And I'm, I'm getting just the general feel going out now of just seeing more people out. It just seems like something's happened. I don't know what happened in the last week or so. A couple of weeks ago, it kind of got bad again, I thought. We kind of went through like a, a relapse as a patient goes through a relapse. I'm like, no, it's a relapse. But now I'm getting the feeling that, and I may be premature, and I may be wrong, and let's face it, I often am. So it may, I may be wrong, but we'll see what happens. Some of the longest-running film franchises in movie history. The longest one, as far as I, I did research for this. <laughs> I did research. <laughs> I did research. That's funny. And the longest-running film franchise is the James Bond Film franchise, it has ran for 52 years. 28 wow. movies total. Now, that's counting every James Bond film, including the first Casino Royale with David Niven, including Never Say Never Again with uh, with Sean Connery, because they're all James Bond films. Okay, You can argue that the MGM official films are, are different. But no, the longest-running film franchise is James Bond, and it's been around a while. Some people would argue he's a time lord, doc, like Doctor Who. He regenerates and looks different every time he comes back. So that's funny. And here's a few more that I did not know about. There's a Japanese film series called the Zato- Zatochi, Zatachi, Z-A-T-O-I-C-H-I. There are 29 films in that film series, and it's run over 48 years. Wow. So that's from Japan. And then two more American series that I didn't know about. The Lone Wolf ser- film series ran from 1917 to 1949. It was a, it was a movie about the, it's called the Lone Wolf 
whoever that character is, 24 films for 32 years. That's a long run. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Bulldog Drummond. I think Bulldog Drummond was a was a was a private eye. You know, the old gumshoe guy. 25 films and it ran for 27 years in the United States from 1922 wow. to 1969. Bulldog. Drummond. So there you go. There's some of the longest running film franchises ever. Three of which I'm not that familiar with. One I'm very familiar with. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick Bond. And as the date gets closer, I think we'll do this one day. Not not today. We won't get into it that that uh, that much. We're just going to talk about who we think might replace James Bond today. But you and I, will, I want to get into uh, maybe do a quick run through, take a couple of segments, and just take each movie in sequential order of release of the James Bond movies, and just each of us get about thirty seconds each. Because let's face it, there's there's a lot of them, and it would take a long time to just get into depth the way we talk about movies. True. Oh, we're going to talk about James Bond, but it's going to take six episodes to do it. Now, we'll, we'll do it one day right before the movie comes out. I'll see where November 20th falls. It obviously falls on a Thursday or Friday. That's when movies come out. And we'll pick that weekend, and we'll kind of dissect 30 seconds each each film, you know, the good points, the bad points, what we liked about it, and our favorite, and whatnot. And uh, we'll talk about that. How about how's that sound? That works. I want to shake you, not stir you. So, yeah, but right now we're talking about the Bond actors. This is reportedly Daniel Craig's last James Bond film. And we were thinking, who could replace Daniel Craig as James Bond? And how do they sit down and go, okay, it's time to replace Bond. Mm-hmm. Let's all sit in a room, lock the door here at MGM uh, Bond Productions, Eon Productions, and find out who we can choose. But then again, the person that they choose, they got to want to do it, <laughs> too. I'm sure how many True. people they ask were, would you be no, bad I didn't Bond? Use that, I didn't no, use that as my criteria, Bond. picking the next... Okay, I, I just neither. Pick, we don't okay. know. We couldn't ask these guys anyway. How would we know? <laughs> now I do think we probably have one that's sane. At least one that's sane. We might have that because I think we both talked about them before. Right, and we're creeping up to the top of the hour, so we might knock out a couple right here. Your favorite, and you can call seven seven zero three eight six fourteen fifty anytime during the show today, and tell us who you think would make a good James Bond. I mean, we're interested in hearing from you too. My first pick for James Bond, I think, and I don't know if mine's necessarily in order. I like all three of these guys about equally the same. One of my picks to to play James Bond is a British actor named Luke Evans. Luke Evans is a fantastic actor. He's in a new show. I think it's on Netflix or Amazon Prime or somewhere, and I can't remember the name of the show. He's on some new TV show. But he played in a movie called Dracula Rising, or Dracula Untold. I think it was Dracula Untold, where he played Vlad the Impaler, Dracula. He is a great actor. His presence as Bond, I think, would be great and for my criteria for someone to be James Bond, they have to have the right look, the right stature. They can't look maybe – I don't mind them looking a little older, but I, they can't look too young because you've got to – if you got a young baby-faced guy with uh, baby fat on his face mm-hmm. you know, and no, no facial hair, doesn't look like he can't grow facial hair, how are you going to take him seriously when he's trying to take you down and chase you and go, I'm a secret agent? Hey, I'm a secret agent, dude. Stop. I was trying to see <laughs> if I knew work. Luke Evans from anything else. Yeah, Luke Evans. He, uh, if you, you could just, uh, you can actually kind of Google him. Luke Evans in a tux. I, I did that too. The, all these actors, I think I want to be James Bond. I googled them in a tux, photos in a tux, and I was looking up just to see how they would look. And, oh, the uh, series The Alienist, right now. That's it. That's the new show that he's in. Yeah, but he was in the. Oh, Dracula apparently, he film. was in the remake of Midway. Yeah, he was, and I haven't seen that yet. I need to. So see I'll that. give you one of mine, my, my top, Evans. which I think may be on your list, but I still th- he's the one that I. Think Think might be creeping to past the point, but Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender. I agree with that 100%. And he's also quoted as saying he wasn't interested. But again, when they back a truckload of money up to your door, beep, sometimes you. Beep, what is that noise? Hey, is that the Brinks truck? What's that noise? <laughs> What's oh, oh, a truck out in my front of my. It's a truck out in my front yard. Why is there a truck out there? Hello, what are you doing with that Why truck? do we have this message to drain the pool? Oh, because they're bringing a bunch of gold <laughs> coins. Dump it in there. Scrooge McDuck. Time. Uh, I think I'll play James Bond then. I've changed my mind. But uh, yeah, I agree with Michael Fassbender 100%. All the scenes in any of the X-Men between him and James McAvoy when they're talking as, as Nito and Professor X, those are the best parts of those films. But they're two great actors. Michael Fassbender would be fantastic. Well, he can also do the action. He could. Yeah, and he has the Bond look, too. You have to have the Bond look. And speaking on there, we'll have more after the top of the hour. We'll be back. Bowling sure makes me hot and thirsty. This is a job for Kool-Aid. Hey, Kool-Aid! Oh, yeah, Kool-Aid here, bringing you fun. Kool-Aid got thirst on the run. Get a big, wide, happy ear to ear. Kool-Aid smile, yeah, yeah, I'll call the biggest smile is a Kool-Aid smile. A Kool-Aid smile, a Kool-Aid smile. Your friend's cool. My friend's Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid brand soft drink. Hey, hey, Susie 
Q, what's cooking with you? Your teeth look whiter than new, new, new. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new Pepsodent. Get with it, kids. New package, new flavor, new formula, too, means brighter smile for me and you. You'll, You'll wonder, wonder where, where the yellow went, went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The new formula with IMP gets teeth much whiter. You can see it cleans the stains and film away while Erium bites tooth decay. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The taste is new, so fresh and clean. That new taste really lasts. It's keen. And while it makes your smile a rave, it also makes your breath behave. So start going steady right away with Pepsodent. Get some today. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. 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 Stand by to receive our transmission. You are listening to BK on the Air on AM 1450, FM 100.3, and online on the TuneIn radio app. Now, back to a guy who'll make you feel really young, mostly because he's so old. It's BK on the Air. I'm now aiming precisely at your groin. It says, speak over a hold your peace. Mm, such a delicate touch. Sheer magnetism, man. Do you know him? Not socially. His name's Jaws. He kills people. You have a nasty habit of surviving. Well, you know what they say about the fittest? You're not a sportsman, Mr. Bond. Why did you break off the encounter with my pet python? I discovered he had a crush on me. Maybe I misjudged Stromberg. Any man who drinks Dom Perignon 52 can't be all bad. Yes, well, you wouldn't have a smaller piece of thread than that, would you? Curious, somebody seems to have stuck a knife in my wallet. Oh, they missed you. What a pity. Hang on, James. The thought had occurred to me. Stinging in the rain. That's not funny, 007. Can you swim? <gasps> Last one, Can You Swim, is from uh, uh, Spy Who Loved Me as the uh, the Lotus turns into the submarine, submarine. and goes off into the water. A little greatest you know, uh, quotes from Roger, Roger Moore. Moore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had some quotes from Roger Moore since we are talking about James oh. Bond. Welcome back. It's BK on the air. Uh, we're, th- we're taking your calls, and we're actually discussing who we think might replace, who, who we'd like to replace Daniel Craig as James Bond if this is, is indeed J- uh, Daniel's last Bond film. Now, what a lot of people aren't talking about is Daniel Craig may not quit i mean he may he's very possibly might change his mind and i guess they will still keep him if he wants to stay on but uh, who knows they may want somebody new anyway to maybe pay them a little less because <laughs> somebody new might get a little less than the last guy because you know if you're working at a place for a long time you got all that uh, seniority built up and then someone comes in they replace you they can always start them at a, at a lower salary so they may want to do that or they may just want to start and you and i talked about this they may want to the new trend is may just keep bond for three or four films and then change uh after about three or four films now that may be the new trend i don't know it'd be interesting mm. to get the new blood and now I mentioned earlier that Luke Evans was one of my favorite picks as James Bond, a British actor, fantastic guy, talented. I could see him slip right into the role. And you mentioned before we went to the break earlier, uh, Michael Fassbender, mm-hmm. uh, who's, who's great as Magneto in the in the in the X Men films for Marvel, who's a fantastic actor, and that's the one that's on my list as well. So so far we have matched Michael Fassbender as James Bond, and I think probably Fassbender, probably out of the three that I've got, would be. I'll maybe almost a tie is my f- top favorite Bond. I haven't talked about my other one yet, but we right. matched on Fastbender. Are we going into two and three now? Yeah, you want okay. to go to your next one okay. since we matched on he one? He may have yeah. been a Superman, but I think he could make a great secret agent. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. We've matched on two because <laughs> he's on my list as well. He, Him and Fassbender are probably tied for the number one spot for me. If they pick either one of those guys, I'd be totally well, happy. Well, I as liked heck. him in the latest Tom Cruise Mission Impossible where he was sort of a CIA agent. Right. And he carried I'd more of that, that presence. He was – he was when he had the beard in that, remember? Yeah. And then he had to go do some pickup shots and he didn't get, couldn't get rid of the oh, beard that's mustache. Right. That so they was messing up, the, fix... messing up the Justice League right. scenes. That's right. I forgot about that. So, um, And then my third <laughs> one is actually a guy that I think would be if you want that rugged. Can I say something about him first? Sure. Henry Cavill is a fantastic choice. If you did, you see Man from Uncle the remake. I did not. You need to see it because if 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 he's playing anyone in it, he's playing James Bond. 
that movie put it over the top for me for him being Bond. It's a fan. It's a remake of an old TV show called mm-hmm. Man from Uncle, and everyone was like, "How can you remake Man from Uncle? It's going to be horrible." I watched it. I thought it was fantastic. It's a great movie, and I would I recommend you watch it. I got to put that in the queue to rewatch it. It's really, I remember it's you really said good. That. Yeah. My last one is a guy who I really have come to really, 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 really like. Um, and I think he's very flexible. I think he has some of the Daniel Craig rough and sort of not the not the handsome chiseled figures, but he could actually carry the part. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. And he's on one of those uh, lists that's out there about odds of so-and-so becoming Bond, and they list the actors of, 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 the, of the odds of them becoming Bond. That, that's on the GQ. He's on the GQ list of, like, the 20 actors they have listed as Bond as well, Tom Hardy. I can't immediately see Tom doing it, but here's the, pro- here's the thing with that. That doesn't mean anything because <laughs> – Everything that Tom has done so far, a lot of his roles, I couldn't have seen him in those. But when I finally saw him, I'm like, oh, wow, he's really great. So he really surprised me. So I do think he, he could be a wild card in when, that. It, it may have been a crappy movie, but when you saw Venom, he had a sarcasm that was James Bond-ish. Oh, really? Okay. And yeah. he also had a little bit of it when he was in Inception. But I also think he can do the action. Right. He, oh, he's he got the, the physique action. if he needs the physique for the, the obligatory shirtless shots. Um, <laughs> if you can and, do the action in Mad Max Fury Road, right. you can do the action in any movie. And he, can, uh, and he can do the accent if you want him to, to be. Sure, you know. yeah. I just think he just is a more rougher looking Bond. He's sort of the he, Daniel he Craig. Could, he could he could probably do it. I, I, would, I would agree with that. Uh, so those were my three. Just so he doesn't use the Bane voice, that's all I ask. Hey, I don't Bond, want to James use Bond. Bond. My name's Bond. James Bond. She cannot stir. You should wear a mask, too. It's all the trend. Who knew I'd be a no, trendsetter? No. No. So, uh, yeah. Maybe I should go get the Bane mask and wear well, that see, I can't. I can't name my next one because I've already named mine. With Henry Cavill, so we matched on two of them. So, so we matched there's two three. of the three. <laughs> yeah. So you got Luke, you got uh, you got Tom Hardy on your mm-hmm. list, and I've got Luke, Luke Evans, Evans on mine. On so any of any of all, and and I'm interested in seeing who else. Um, who's the British actor? Oh no, I can't. Um, I can't think. My wife has a favorite. She goes, uh, and I can't remember who he is now. Uh, his last name's Wilson. A British Luke. actor? No, it's not Luke Wilson. <laughs> Oh, is it Clive Wilson? Owen Wilson? Who, who am I thinking of? It's a British actor. Clive, Clive Owen. Clive Owen. She thinks Clive Owen should be James Bond, and I and I've seen him in some was things. It City of Men or something. Yeah, and he's if you see that, you go, oh, maybe. But but he's, he wouldn't be my first choice. But but again, he would be a better choice than some of the other ones I'm seeing than people are pulling out. There's one younger British actor that played the Beast in X Men. You know who I'm talking about? The younger Beast in X Men First Class. Uh, he was he was one of the he was the wild boy in uh, Mad Max Fury Road the the, the white painted uh, right. wild boy he's a British actor and he's on the list of GQ of possibly pe- really? being Bond now when I see him in movies I'm thinking now he might be a little young but he may have aged since then because the X Men movies were a few years ago and uh, hmm. he may be, and I can't his name escapes me but I know someone's out there screaming well, his name let me ask you this question but, because if you go back in the Bonds there's been only a couple that were more slight. Roger Moore was probably the slimmest of the James Bonds. Yes. Followed by uh, Pierce, Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. I would say uh, All the other shorter. ones have been kind of like broad-shouldered yeah. and more muscular, and obviously Daniel Craig, probably the most muscular. Right. Which way should they go? Should they go back to maybe a more blend-in-the-crowd Bond or the standout hunk Bond? Well, I think, due to the, my opinion would say, go with someone who, because Bond didn't really always uh, dep- depend on that. You're right. But if you with the, with today's casting and everyone stuck on looks and muscular and hunkiness and whatnot, I think after Craig you could probably never go back to that. But I would be fine picking someone like Roger Moore in that in that uh, aspect. Sean Connery wasn't a muscle bound guy either, but he was nobody very had broad tall shoulders and, and he was tall. Stature, yes. Speaking on there, more when we come back. You better pray to the god of skinny punks that this wind doesn't pick up. Because I'll come over there and jam an oar up there. Hey, we're back. It's BK on the air. No channel Star Wars today. We're continuing the Bond talk. I've got a lot of other stories here to talk about. So instead of, since there's no Star Wars report... I'm going to do this story right here, and we'll get to this day in history as well. The Mandalorian Season 2, it gets a premiere date. Sci-Fi.com. The last last week would have been the Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, and we know that there's no big conventions going on except online, like with DragonCon. Everyone expected trailers and news to drop during that. There was hope 
last year that if the Kenobi series had f- uh, filmed in the opening spring of 2020, we would have had a trailer for that too. Now, thanks to COVID-19, the convention was canceled, and Obi-Wan series hasn't begun filming, and the Cassian Andor series, the guy from uh, Rogue One, still feels like a twinkle in Lucasfilm's eye. We don't know when it, that, that's ever going to start, but we did have s- stories that... Um, Production are starting up on a lot of other things now, so maybe that's not far off. Since it's already been through the production process, the only thing that that's still on track on time is the second season of The Mandalorian. We knew it would be premiering next month, but now we have an official date we can count down to. Set your clocks for October 30th. Alan was joking about Halloween earlier. Hmm. That's when The Mandalorian is going to be hitting Disney+. Plus. Wow, that means we're going to watch The Mandalorian the 30th, and the very next night we'll do our Halloween show and do our show during the day on Saturday because it falls on a Saturday this year. feels that's like it's going to be a pretty good weekend. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> There's still no trailer or any other real indication about what the season will be, like excerpts uh, and reports uh, that some some, some new, exciting new characters and big name actors will be joining the sophomore season will uh, ahsoka boba fett rex or others show up maybe they can say only we hope only a trailer drops soon so we can find out i heard a rumor about this i don't know whether you heard this or not but i heard and it was a rumor in a couple places but it is just a rumor so don't don't get all crazy on me people <laughs> and uh <laughs> sebastian stan may appear as Luke Skywalker in the next season of The Mandalorian. I don't know if they mean this season or the third season. Because he's, if you look at him, certain photos, he does bear a very close resemblance to Mark Hamill in his, as far as his facial features go. And I heard they were going to go the route. It was reported that they were going to use Mark Hamill and de-age him as, as Luke Skywalker. I guess he would, unless it's a flashback because this when is he's really younger. Because this is supposed to be younger. after Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. So Mark Hamill would obviously be much younger than that. So they're like, no, we don't have the You'd money have to, to do that. His beard. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't have. The the money to do that so and, and so they're keeping uh wait a minute costs down you're for trying a TV to get me to show, swallow disney doesn't have the that's money. what they're saying i guess they were they're watching the money spending even on the uh-huh. Mandalorian, which is a tv show Sorry. not a movie I'm throwing the uh but <laughs> the blank flag on the yeah. play <laughs> and it could be a rumor but they're like sebastian stan we, we're going to cast him as luke skywalker which would be interesting i don't think that would be a a big problem so uh huh. yeah. so you got the mandalorian on the horizon coming up and uh, we're talking about James Bond. You can, too. 770-386-1450. We're talking about actors who could po- probably, in our minds, replace James Bond in the James Bond films, if Daniel Craig has definitely hung it up. So I got something for you to just kind of add Uh-oh. to your Netflix watching. What you got? Maybe you've seen it. Maybe you haven't. Brand new documentary dropped not that long ago called High Score. I heard about that, and I haven't seen it yet. It's a nope. five-part series on the creation of uh, the video the video game. game. Yeah, starts from I the arcade. That. Goes into like consoles, goes into the console right. war. It's on, it's on first Netflix, right? games. Yep, I watched now, all five. of you them. You know how you when you're flipping through Netflix on your on your menu, mm-hmm. and we, if you if you hold on something long enough at the top, it'll the start playing starts. the trailer. I watched the, the little trailer snippet from it. I'm like, that looks like something I might like. I should watch that. What's and crazy is I, I think they missed some because I was like, you didn't do any real time strategy games. I'm like, where where's like your your first World of Warcrafts and your uh, Age of Empires? Right. Like, they didn't do that. They really didn't. They focus on the eighties or something, or what they well, do. Well, a lot of it, which I guess, sort of, this was uh, maybe the overarching theme: the original creators across a wide swath and how right. they sort of intersected along the way. Yeah. So it was kind of neat to see the history of the arcade game, like the original Pac Man, the original Pong, the Breakout, yeah. how and what influenced people. But then when they started going to the console games and then the PC games, it did end in the third final installment of the third or the fifth. The guys that created the first first person shooter, you know, we had 3D Wolfenstein, like, which led to Doom, Doom and right. Quake, and, yeah, which I, so, I thought was good. I love the Wolfenstein, and they ha- they they interviewed the guys, and I don't. Do you like this trend? I, I talked with Walt about this. I get they want to make the folks in the middle of the documentary feel more than just an interview, but it sometimes feels quirky when they have them do goofy things on screen instead of just interview them. Right. Like what were they having? Can you do? sort of? I know you you used to be in a sword and sorcery. Can I get you to hold a skull as if you always go to your cabinet and pick up some <laughs> piece of thing and just start looking at it? I mean, wow, it, no, that's kind of it's it, like they're posing. If it comes them. off as silly, then it's silly. Yeah, um, you know, like the guy that created the first Street Fighter. He's, so this is an older Japanese guy now. I mean, he was <laughs> right. younger than he did, and all of a sudden he stops in an alley and he goes, and and they've got like a digital character and they shoot it out of his hand. I was like. Wow, you know, that's, I guess that's okay, but it's kind of silly. Maybe yeah. it's for the modern audience, and they need yeah. to be more engaging. I just like hearing from them, right? Yeah, and just to break it up, the stories of like some of these folks that 
no background in computers, no background. They just That's just, amazing. They just they sat down and go, I got this idea for why can't we get a game to do this? Wow. And because no one was doing it, they were like, well, maybe I can figure it out. Like, right. I'm just trying to imagine, you know, saying yeah. to myself, I have no programming. I have no abilities to do that. But yeah. I think I could get a game to do this. And since no one else yeah. is doing it, I'll go do it. Like, it's crazy. And back in the day when the computers weren't like they were now, they were very archaic. Mm-hmm. archaic there was one archaic. episode <laughs> and I was like, it made me feel almost kind of proud to be an American. It did. I'm always proud. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But You're right. I'm proud, too. Some kids, And, you know, kids love tinkering. Some guy figured out how to take apart one of the first Game Boys and modify it to do 3D, like he could fly oh, yeah, through on it. The, on the and the people from Nintendo flew him over. First, they were going to sue the company, but they flew him over and they go, we want you to show us how you could do something that we know our engineer said can't be done. I'm like, wait a minute. You're going to Japan, to the heart of Nintendo, where they told you the Game Boy cannot yeah. do 3D. And he goes, look. Sh-, and he showed him. <laughs> and they hired so- him. So. And he helped develop how the Sky Fox cartridge was the first 3D console game. Oh, really? Yeah. Was Sky just, Fox or Star Fox? Star Fox. Yeah, Star, Star Fox. Because I played Star, Star Fox. Fox. It was fun. So in other words, they gave him an ultimatum. They said, we're going to sue you, or you can show us how well, you did this and come to work for us. I think <laughs> the a, suit was more to scare him to get on uh, the plane. Let me choose. What should, uh, what should I do? Uh, sued or go to work and get paid? Oh, I don't know. So as far as if you got a history wow. of arcade games, if you grew up like us, you played everything from Pac-Man to Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong got sued because the folks at Universal goes, you stole our infringement. King Kong. It was like, well, wow. we just assumed in Japan that Kong was synonymous <laughs> for gorilla. We created a gorilla. Yeah. But they had right. to hire a bunch of lawyers to convince yeah, somebody wow. that they didn't steal the idea from Universal. Wow, it's that's the, actually that's the most the coolest part. The number of lawsuits that played into the success or failure of companies. Right. I think I'll watch it now. I'll put that. Give on it a go because I, it fits the template of this show for for certain. Because we did. If, if I don't know how much it would be if we could just actually if I could just I don't I don't necessarily want it back. But if you could find a magical way to show me in a total how much I've spent on playing video games, <laughs> not not the ones you buy, just in the arcade. The quarters. Like, how many quarters? And then later on, it was you know fifty cents. Sometimes it was a dollar to play some of these games. Let me see the total. It's like when Jerry Lewis, it is Labor Day, it's the Jerry Lewis telethon. Let's see the new total. He'd always turn around and the and the, the numbers would roll up into the millions and he'd see the new total. I'm like, let me see that total of the quarters that I put into video games. I don't want to see the total. See. I'll be crying. Because it, it would be very embarrassing probably. But I did have a lot of fun. It was money well spent. 770-386-1450 is our number. It's BK on there. Somebody's calling right now. Hey, hello, who's this? Barry. Eric. Yes. Did I, Barry, did I hear you say Sebastian Stan was going to play Luke Skywalker. Uh, but I also have had the caveat attached to it that it was a rumor. But, but, but. Yes. Rumor, rumor. It is a rumor. Okay. Is it, but, uh, okay. I can see it I'm, happening. So, I think he looks like Mark Hamill. He really does. I've seen photos where he looks a lot like him. I just looked him up on IMDb again just huh. to make sure I was thinking the right person. Yeah. And. Yeah, the Winter Soldier. I could actually. Oh, God. I don't like to say this much on your show. Yeah? Oh, oh my goodness. Are you about to... Eric, are you going to agree with me? <laughs> you can see it, right? Alan, Alan, this is a momentous occasion. Mm-hmm. He agreed with us, and we ended on a on a nice note yet last weekend when he called on the show. Oh, no. I think he agrees with us now as well. Wow. <laughs> That's great. This is not- well, no, they, this they, is not good. I need to get my head checked. Well, they said they did. They didn't have the money, and, and Alan was joking about Disney and Disney Plus doesn't have the money. They didn't have the money to de age uh, Mark Hamill, or they didn't want to spend the money to de age Mark Hamill. So they, they have the money to do everything else. <laughs> well, you know, he is in the Marvel franchise, so it's possible he could still do this for Disney because he does work for them. I, so I see it. I do too. I think it'd be good. What do you think about Bond? Did you have a guy in in mind to play James Bond if Daniel Craig is hanging it up? Hanging it up. I think Andrew Elba. Andrew Elba, okay. Uh, I could see he's a great actor, but I think I think I read an, an interview where the, the the Broccoli's and Michael Wilson said number one Bond is never going to be a female, and I think they said Bond yeah. uh, is going to remain a, a Caucasian male. I think. Yeah, I read that too. Yeah, but he but would be I've, he would be good. Idris is a great actor, and he's no, in the Suicide no, Squad by no, the way coming out. Did you no, see? Hey, no. Eric, if you haven't seen it on YouTube, it's it was a commercial for the BBC. You need to check out Idris Elba applies for a barista job at like a coffee shop. <laughs> Is it really him? Uh-huh. uh-huh. It's really him. <laughs> Actually, and he does it as him. He's like, well, he goes, you have no qualifications. He goes, I'm Idris Elba. I can do anything. <laughs> That's yes. And Tom Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy was one of Alan's choices. Yeah, for a bond. Can you not That's see it? Alan. 
Uh-oh. You don't I think Tom alone. could play ball? Wait a minute. We're not going to go on a sour note here. We're doing so well. I'm going to leave Alan alone, but Alan needs to get his eyes checked because, no. I don't think he agrees. No. With Have Tom you Hardy. not seen the body of work of Tom Hardy? Don't just look at Bane. You should yes, look at all of the characters Tom Hardy's played. He is a he flexible is chameleon. He can become whatever he <laughs> needs to be. Too big. Too big. Well, no. We're com- hey, we're coming up on too a hard. We're coming up on a break. And uh, <laughs> thanks for calling, buddy. We'll throw your interest Elba boat into the hopper. Okay. I'll probably call back next week. Okay. Don't threaten me. Make a promise. Love you, buddy. All right. Just here. So, don't you threaten me. Don't you threaten me. It's not a threat. That's a promise. Wow. <laughs> Tom Hardy's too hard. <laughs> Wait a minute. Against Henry that. Cavill? Uh, hey, I got a story about an 80s an eighties song that made a comeback new to a commercial. I'm going to do that when we come back from a break. And also, the We built F- this city? No. no. <laughs> Same era, though. Talk about James Bond stuff. The FAA has finally approved drone delivery for Amazon, too. I heard we'll that. about that, too. All that when we come back. It's BK on the air, shaking, not stirred. Hey, it's BK on the air. And Alan Sanders. Hey, Alan, let's get a mental picture and imagine both of our homes. Okay, I'm thinking. Now let's imagine the interior and exterior of our homes. Got it. Now, are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Paint Paint job. job. Well, Morris Color Center and Benjamin Moore have any color you can imagine for the inside or outside of your home. Benjamin Moore paints are available at Morris Color Center, 242 South Tennessee Street in Cartersville. Call them at 770-382-4990. They've been painting Bartow County since 1965. It's okay if you don't understand what he's talking about. He probably doesn't either. It's BK on the Air on AM 1450 FM 100.3 and online using the TuneIn radio app. Yes, and however you're listening, I'm glad that you're doing it. We're back. It's BK on the Air here. Uh, I was I had this, and we're continuing to talk about James Bond. If you want to call in, let us know, 770-386-1450, who you think should replace. Daniel Craig is James Bond because it may be the last time he's playing him. There's a, don't you love it when old songs classic rock, whatever the case may be, become identified with a commercial. Like you were talking last week about how you heard an, uh, an ELO song in a, in a with newer commercial. Bud, with uh, Mick Ultra. And, uh, <laughs> so, and, you know, there was a, don't, an insurance Don't get me it. down. Don't get me down. Because This that, beer is so light, you'll float away. Sometimes they use, uh, they'll use they use songs for commercials, and you start thinking of that. Because as a kid, if I heard the song for the first time in a commercial, I thought it was for that commercial I thought it was that's what the song was for. I'm like, oh, you mean that's a real song <laughs> that was back in the day? There was a um, remember the Windex. I mean, the clean- Bee Gees didn't just sell sun-kissed flavored <laughs> orange <laughs> uh, soda pop. Windex glass cleaner. There used to be a commercial, and it would go, uh, uh, "Gray skies are going to clear up. Put on a Windex shine." And I'm like, oh, that's the Windex shine jingle. I love that song. And they're like, that's a that's a put on a happy face song from Broadway or something mm-hmm. back in the day. I'm like, really? It is? I didn't know it was a kid, though, when it came out. So I don't I don't remember that. <laughs> well, a certain, a certain song has hit the charts again due to it being in a commercial. And you won't believe, well, you might believe the song once you hear what it is. That's right. A bunch of, we've got a rat problem. <laughs> That's right. Rats round and round back on the Billboard chart after debuting earlier this year, a new Geico insurance commercial featuring 80s hair band, uh, metal band Rat performing their signature hit, Round and Round, with a little snippet of it that you just heard right there, has aired more than 10,000 times. What's more, the humorous ad has helped propel the song onto the Billboard rock charts at least a couple months back, for the first time since its 80s heyday. In addition addition to its airing on television, the commercial has racked up nearly 9 million views on YouTube since being posted on April the 12th of this year. The clip begins with a couple discussing how they enjoy their new home, but admitting they do have a rat problem. At that point, it cuts to singer Stephen Piercy and company performing round and round in the basement. From there, the couple runs into Rat in the kitchen and the bathroom as well, kind of staring at them as they walk by. Now, on Facebook, Rat posted a screen grab of the latest Billboard Rock Digital Song sales charts. I think this was a couple months ago. It's not there right now. Uh, where it sat for a while at number 18, barring a line from the song, 
song, the band stated, What comes around goes around. Rat is back for more on the Billboard Rock Digital Song Sales Charts with Round and Round. The band's first hit single from their debut record, Out of the Cellar, in 1984, reenters the charts for 2020. I remember that song well because at the time, I was working at Hardee's <laughs> in 1984 when I first moved over to Georgia. Uh, and I remember that being one of the staples on the 80s radio now, back then. Do you remember those early me. videos? Remember I the do. famous Hollywood personality in the videos? Like, how's this guy in a rat video? <laughs> Milton Berle? He was in the radio, that's right. And, to- and Tony Katane was in the uh, White, White Snake, Snake commercial. In, in the do video, you know why right. Milton Berle agreed to be in the no, rat video? No, I don't. Why was he because in the rat video? Because Marshall Berle, his nephew, was the band's manager at the time. Really? <laughs> and they go, you know, this would be that cool. Let's get funny. my uncle. He's an actor. We'll get him to come on in he's and an add actor. some credibility to the set. My uncle. Yeah, he's it's been in a couple things. Really? Yeah. So <laughs> He's only a legend. I loved the, I loved Rat when I, when I was younger. I was like, okay, this is the harder version of Motley Crue. Motley Crue was the going a little... Version. <laughs> because they were very similar, the way they looked, the way they sounded even, their voice, their quality. But Rat didn't go quite to the makeup to the level that Motley Crue did early. Well, according to Variety, the commercial has benefited from being one of the few humorous TV ads to debut during the COVID-19 pandemic. Quote, we definitely talked about the timing was on our side, said Justin Harris, vice president and creative director of the Martin Agency. That's Geico's longtime advertising partner. At the end of the day, we realized people want to feel a sense of what's normal again. It didn't take us long to figure that out, and it was a great way to stay true to the brand, unquote. Now, Percy told Variety that he's a lot more recognizable these days because of the Geico ad. The rock front man also added that the timing of the commercial was meant to be. It's ironic because in 1984, it was the year of the rat on the Chinese <laughs> calendar. <laughs> so that's funny. It's the year of the rat in 2020, he explained. What goes around comes around. No, I'll tell you no why. No pun intended or intended, <laughs> one or the other. Great song. What what, like. what are you on the Chinese thing? I'm not a rat. I'm a horse. On, on do the, I have to look at the have year? Yeah, like, I think it's the year that you do. I, I'm, I is it the know month and the year or the year? Okay. It's the year, I think. But I'm a horse on the Chinese calendar. I'm not a rat. Probably something dumb like, you know, probably like a mouse. <laughs> but just remember, the, the, the animal that you are is no reflection on your personality now. You don't have to say What that. Chinese... That's, animal that's like I did the, uh, the I what is I my Patronus? This. What is my Patronus with Harry Potter? And mine's a squirrel. It's not anything cool like an elk or whatever. And uh, Mrs. BK did the Patronus thing. And hers is a dolphin. So I'm like, oh, you got a cool dolphin. I got a gray squirrel as my Patronus. But the animal doesn't Oh, I'll matter. take it. Yeah, I'm a matter. dog. You're a dog? Okay, you're, you're a dog. So there I'm you go. I'm a dog. Perfect. I'm my own best friend. Perfect. <laughs> You're a mog. <laughs> half man, half dog. That's fantastic. So, yeah, dog is the 11th in the 12-year cycle of the wow. Chinese zodiac. Well, you're not a rat. So if you were born in 70, 82, 94, 2006, yeah. or most recently, 2018. Isn't that cool? That's cool. The year of the dog. I'm, I now know the tattoo I want. No, I'm just kidding. It took after, me this long. After all this time, you're finally going to get a tattoo, and it's going to be a dog. But you need to tell where you're going to put it, though. You want to put it where it can't be seen easily, but it can be seen if you want to show it to somebody. So <laughs> I had can go such a job good interviews. joke, but I just I oh, pulled back. Good. I was okay. I was the coyote dangling over the cliff. I was like you know, no, I, and I got pulled. You back. were dangling over the cliff because on this side of the cliff there was radio live, <laughs> and on that side there was podcast. Right. And you like, decided to fall back on the radio side. Thank goodness. Didn't tell me what it is. Tell me at the break. I will tell you. A bit of a dachshund tie-in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Oh. oh, so you mean it's German. I get it. All right. right. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I'll change subjects here just to keep us going. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah. Nothing to see here. From WSB-TV uh, here locally in Atlanta. The FAA, talk about James Bond, cool stuff. The FAA has finally approved drone delivery for Amazon. You know, we heard about this for a long time. Quote, the certification is an important step to, uh, for a- prime air and indicates the FAA's confidence in Amazon's operating and safety procedures for a drone delivery service that will one day deliver packages to our customers around the world. We will continue to develop and refine our technology to fully integrate delivery drones into the airspace and work closely with the FAA and other regulators around the world to realize our version of 30-minute delivery, David Carbon said, an Amazon vice president. Can you uh, imagine that? Yeah. <clears throat> 30 minutes. Like, you're like, oh, man, I really need a printer cartridge. <laughs> Quick, <laughs> thirty minutes or less. No, I could get in the car, have to yeah. put on some clean clothes, maybe put shoes on, take a bath, drive, a, <laughs> take a bath. No, I'm not gonna take a bath. <laughs> or I just go to my computer, and next thing I know, yeah, but wait, you have to wait for it to come in the mail, though, right? How can you get it quick? Thirty oh, minutes. Really? That's you awesome. Imagine how cool. I, I gotta say, 
I think that's cool. It is cool that there's nothing that I can think other than it just being weird because we all think something's weird at first that's new. Now there's a lot of things that we thought were weird back in the day that are commonplace now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure the first people who flew in the first airliner with automatic pilot were maybe a little nervous back in the day, but automatic pilot for they planes have been around for years. They didn't know. Yo, I guess they Nobody didn't tell them. They, were gonna tell them so they didn't tell them until much later. Like, I see two people up there. They're flying. Oh, those are mannequins. <laughs> no. It's rock. Uh, you mean Hayden Christensen's flying the plane? No. Uh, the certification will allow rock? Amazon to continue to test its electric delivery drone unveiled last year. The drone is designed to carry up to five pounds for up to 15 miles, according to CNBC. The company has been promising 30-minute delivery air, as we have talked about it before in the past, since Prime Air was announced in 2013. So they've been talking about it for a while. So now it's coming to fruition. There is a limitation on the weight and obviously the distance from how close you are to a drone center. But all of that will even improve. That's crazy. Can you imagine ordering like a piano? And, no, uh, no, I mean, or something like that, and a drone delivering it. It'll maybe, be a good maybe a tiny drone. keyboard. Well, that's what I'm saying. But something bigger. It could could be later down the road. Something bigger could deliver something. I mean, we were kind of joking. But when you think about the number of smaller items, a lot of the stuff that my wife orders, things like when a cord goes bad or it's like, easily drone deliverable. It's, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. It's just instead of having to wait two, three days for it to show up, could you imagine getting it like 30 minutes after now, you place now your order? How long before we get to? You were talking about jetpacks, and I got a jetpack story coming up from LAX in California. Drone delivery of you, you taking a drone somewhere down the road and back. Like, I need to go to downtown Atlanta. I'll let a drone take me down there. Personal drone taxis. Again, we laugh about it. It could happen. Could. It sure would be cool, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> sure would. Stand by for action. Anything can happen in the next half hour. Hey, I'm back. It's BK on the air. And as usual, I've got way too much to talk about and a not enough time to do it. I've got a long way to go. But a short, a time, short to time to get there. Are I'm, you eastbound? I'm noonbound. <laughs> From 10 till noon. Let's do this day in history before we run out of time. On oh, this yeah. day, September 5th, 1885, we'll go, we used to go way, 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 way back on the first one. Back in 1885, something was delivered to a dealer in Fort Wayne, Indiana for the first time in 1885 on September the 5th. The first gasoline pump. 1885. And when, when I hear the dates <laughs> on some of these, I'm like, that long ago for that? Really? Now, you know, it became commonplace later, but it always had to start somewhere. But the first one was delivered to Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1885. Really? On this uh, September 5th, on this day, 1958, The Huckleberry Hound Show by Hanna-Barbera featuring Yogi Bear premieres on TV for the first time. And that's a lot earlier than I thought. I used to watch Huckleberry Hound in the 70s mm-hmm. as, as a kid, and it didn't really dawn on me later how long ago those actually came out were in the late 50s, early 60s. September 5th, obviously, on this day in history. Labor Day weekend, 1966, also the year I was born and the year Star Trek was born. The Jerry Lewis First Muscular Dystrophy Labor Day Telethon raises a million dollars on this day in 1966. Wow. 1976, Jim Henson's The Muppet Show premieres on television with Mia Farrow as the first uh, Mia Farrow as the first guest star, Woody Allen's wife. Fantastic. I was a big fan of The Muppet Show. First time I saw it, it was one of those shows that, like, oh, this show's kind of for adults, too. It's got, it's really funny. It's like the old Warner Brothers film, car, cartoons. Oh, yeah. You're for kids really and for adults. Uh, 1977, September 5th on this day, the Voyager 1 in the United States Voyager? launched. Well, it was Voyager 6. Voyager 1 launched toward a flyby of Nerd. Jupiter and Saturn. <laughs> It's not the Voyager 6, man. What are you talking about? I just knew Voyager. Five Voyagers after that. Uh, 1999, Alan Funt, the American TV host and creator of Candid Camera, passed away at 84 on this day in history in 1999. I used to watch it, and I just thought it was funny. It's such Back a cool the, concept. It was, it, they still do it now. It's a lot more raunchy kind of things they do now when they hide cameras. But back then, it was so funny when they would, when they would do things like uh, – the, the bowling pin, the, they set up some bowling pins and not tell anyone, and the bowling pins are made out of ceramic so that when they hit it, they disintegrated. <laughs> they're like, the people's reactions, some of them are like shocked, and some of them just, their jaw drops, and they're like, what? 
Mm. What happened? Yeah. Uh, birthdays on this date today, September 5th. Bob Newhart, a staple in television for years. He turned 90 today. 1940 was the birth date today, September 5th, of Raquel Welch. Another mm. girl that I had a crush on back in the day. Nothing wrong with Still Raquel. a nice looking lady, too, by the way. Her daughter's very attractive. She was the girl in a cocoon with, uh, with uh, Steve Gutenberg. The alien that uh, fooled around with Steve Gutenberg in Cocoon. Oh, yeah. Tawny Welch was her name. 1945, Al Stewart was born on this day. Scottish rocker, Year of the Cat, Time Passages. Do you remember those songs? They play them on WBHF here. Time Passages. I do know Year of the Cat. Yeah, Year of the Cat. Al Stewart. Uh, today is also Farouk Bulsara's birthday. Fantastic. I Bless love, you. I love all <laughs> I love all of the songs that he sang. They're fantastic. He what's died. His, he died in 1991. Though. What's his real name? Oh, his real name? Yeah. Oh, it's Freddie Mercury. That's okay. <laughs> and today is the Birdman himself's birthday. He's 68 today. Clint Eastwood. Michael Keaton. Oh, that Birdman. Yeah, I that Birdman of Alcatraz. That Birdman. He went from playing Batman to Birdman to the Vulture. To the Vulture. So he's a Birdman all the way around. So Michael Keaton, who's returning as Batman, by the way, in the Flash motion picture, where we hear that a lot of different DC Universe characters will be running into them from different Do we get to blame Michael Keaton for coming up with the Batman voice? I don't know, do we? Because he kind of was the first one to do it. Adam West didn't do that. No. But then everybody else felt like, okay, you know you got to do what? a different voice. He to didn't cons- sound silly doing it. I thought Christian Bales was a little on the silly His side. His went out toward the edge of like, you do it much bigger, y- I'm well, laughing you know at you. Didn't they Didn't they audio manipulate his two as they went they along? They probably it did. It just sounded like, got more of a growl. Because I, I, I shouldn't have chuckled at it, but I'm like, that's a funny sound. Oh, and then there's always like, are you wearing a clothespin? Because he's like... like <laughs> Christian yeah. Bale's Batman almost sounded like... But he, he can't, uh, Christian kind of has a lisp anyway. Yeah. He has this, this Willis speech way of talking. So, uh, And yeah. I like him. He's, I'm You're not making supposed fun to of know him. better. <laughs> I'm not making fun of him, but I am making fun of him. Uh, number one in the box office, 1976. We'll stick with 76 because that's when The Muppet Show came out. The spirit out. of. Well, not really, but close. On this day, The Shootist with John Wayne came out on this day. And I think I've only seen it once with my dad, with my dad many years ago, but I, I don't remember it that well. Number one on the Billboard chart. Let's stick with 1976. Who do you think was number one in the Billboard chart just a year before Star 76. Wars? 76. Was it like a... It's d- disco. Well, so it's is it like a Bee disco. Gees? Yeah, it is the Bee Gees. But do you know what song it is? You hit the right uh, group there. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody... <laughs> you shouldn't be doing what you're doing right there, but you should be. Okay. So Staying alive? No. Stay, you should be dancing. That's oh. the name of the song. Oh. <laughs> you were dancing right now, and I'm like, you I shouldn't was be doing like... that, but you should. That's your version of dancing is what that is. <laughs> well, uh, we'll yes. get to the phone. Well, someone's on the phone here. We'll get it to it right quick. Let's go to these national days. Today is National Cheese Pizza Day. We were just talking about pizza earlier, but it's National Cheese Pizza. I can eat a cheese pizza. It's pretty plain, but I do like more on it. <laughs> you, you're right. It is plain. Yeah, it's kind of plain. But And even when I order a pizza... One of my toppings is I'll go. I want this, 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 and I want extra cheese. Mm. Just give it. Just give me an extra cheese. Today is National Be Late for Something Day. I didn't do it yet. <laughs> oh wait, I was, I was waiting for my reply, and I decided to be late. For it. I was going to be late coming in today, but I don't <laughs> want to do that. That's kind of important. Today is Nash. I hate this because why would anybody make this a day? It's National Tailgating Day today. Now that is so dangerous. Never tailgate people. I don't think it means the same you thing hit, you think it does. You could hit another car when you follow. I don't too think closely. it means that. What do you tailgating? That's what you do when you follow another. It's car also too what you call a party when you're like pulling your tailgate down and using it as your table. Oh, so it's not follow a car too close. No, oh. no. Well, then never mind. <laughs> So you have a party on the back of your pickup truck, I guess? Yeah. Is that what it is? But I see tailgating, and I think it's following too close. True. Uh, today is National World Beard Day today. Uh, name something I can't do well. <laughs> Dance? If there's na- Sing? Well, no. If there's na- <laughs> National oh, Stubble Day, National I got Stubble down. Day. You got National Scruffy Looking Day <laughs> down back. Who's scruffy, Who's looking? scruffy looking. But so, National Beard, yeah. they just I get well, laughed my beard at. I'm not allowed like in that, that club anymore. My, my beard doesn't grow like Grizzly I Adams. I can't do that one. So, so yeah. So there's a few national days for you today. Someone's on the line right now. Let's see who it is. It's BK on there. Hello, who's this? Hey, it's Eric again. Whoa, call, hello, is it world. National Call Twice Day today too? Yeah. Did you say uh, Bob Newhart had a birthday? Yeah, he's ninety. No, he's dead. Bob Newhart? No, he's yeah. not. I don't he think died so. A couple days ago. Bob Newhart's not dead. No, did he die right, a couple Alan, days Alan's ago? About, Alan's about to check you on that because I don't think he Bob died a couple Newhart. days ago. Like of the Bo- Bob Newhart show and Newhart, Bob Newhart. Yeah. Nah, I thought yeah. he, I thought he was ninety. I know Don Rickles passed away. Who they were best friends with each other. 
No. Um, Bob Newhart. But if he passed away, it must be for a... Don't know that. Uh, <laughs> I can't find uh, that. Okay, Bob Newhart. Tell him a first or second. Okay, every, every site I'm looking at right now, including Wikipedia and other sites like IMDb, show Bob Newhart is still alive. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. telling you, I looked it up. Well, we're looking it up, too. Because I, I just happen to be watching Decades, and you know they show uh, that, yeah. Bob, that, that Bob that Bob coming to the head yeah. back in the 90s. Called New Heart. And it, like, it, uh-oh. The, the yeah. one where he was the comic book artist. I'm looking at every no. news. I'm looking you are, at every you are, you are incorrect, you are sir. In- <laughs> Eric is wrong. <laughs> you are wrong, okay. sir. He is wrong. right now. Oh. <laughs> Eric? How does it feel guess, to be old what? and guess, misled by the guess, internet? Guess what, Eric? You're getting old. You're getting old, Eric. <laughs> Why did you do that? Why did you say Bob Newhart was dead when he's not? <laughs> Call the show. I can't believe it. You have been misinformed. Bob Newhart is very much alive, and I hope he didn't hear that I you said, what I said that. Thanks. Hey, thanks to Big Bang no. Theory, he's just using his Force I, Ghost I know projection. What I saw yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, you check your sources and go back and look. He's still alive. Okay. Uh, oh, all right. All right. What? Bye. Man, Eric's getting old, man. He's starting to... Wow, maybe he's stuff. thinking of a different Bob Newhart. He may be. Maybe it's Bob Newhart that lives down the road that works at Walmart or something. So, no, please don't don't report that about my Bob Newhart, especially when it's not true and he's 90. That's not good. Now, if he dies tomorrow, I'm, I'm blaming Eric. Yeah, I can't find anything... <laughs> no, it's, it's nowhere on the internet. It would be somewhere if he died. It wouldn't be on some of the, of the t- places that we look. Seven seven zero three eight six fourteen fifty is our number. It's BK on the air. Hey, someone's on the line now. Hey, Bob Newhart did die. Okay, how come we can't find it anywhere? I don't know, but he was on. Um, what's the show with Sheldon? Um, yeah, the Big Bang Theory as a Force Ghost. Yeah, he was. He was um, Professor like Neptune or something like that. Yeah. And he passed away in real life, and then they did a thing with him passing away on the show and coming back in the haunting shelter and stuff like that. Yeah, but the problem is nowhere on the Internet right now that we're looking at our vast way of looking up people who have passed right. away can we find it that he did he pass away. I know, but I, but I know that he did pass away probably about a year ago, I think, maybe. But okay. um, right. I don't know why it's well, not coming up on right. the Internet. Well, Go 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 check out go check out all these news outlets that we're looking at because we can find right. more information on Bob passing away. Bob I'll Newhart. do it. Okay, buddy. All right, good to talk to you. Bye. Right. So uh, yeah, the Bob Newhart debate goes on. I didn't know we we're going to end the show like this. But, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I, who knew what kind of controversy we're talking about? <laughs> if he's dead, I'm you really going to feel forget bad. Forget Q and I. We got Bob Newhart. <laughs> no, I don't think Bob Newhart's dead. I got to look at it. I don't. Uh, I can't find it. It's anywhere. BK on there. We'll see everybody out there on Facebook and Twitter, uh, on the podcast, on Anchor, and on YouTube, and on SoundCloud. It's BK on there. We'll see you next week. Long live Bob Newhart. I'm I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. No. I I knew that. No, I don't think so. You put me. <laughs> you put me with George and, and and Lucy in this this weird. Lax Museum of Comedy. No, 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 no. It's this is. It's more like it's like legends, like legends of you know comedy that are alive, dead, all different types of legends. This this legend is going to kick your ass. <laughs> that way you'll know I'm alive. I, I, really, I thought you didn't curse. You thought I was dead. What are you going to do now? I was going to give out the first award for supporting actor in a comedy series. Are they all alive? I think so.